So once our um, storage flask here of uh, solvent has been uh, properly cycled enough times, we need to replace the Teflon stopper with the septum so that we can syringe the solvent out. So to do that, we wanna make sure that it's onto nitrogen and that we've got a good flow. My out bubbler here is showing a good flow out, but I wanna make sure we increase that a little bit in the systems. Tighten this top valve just a little bit. trying to push it out, so it's good. That's the second. Stop with the second. And I have this just to weigh down the Kim wipe for the Teflon stopper. Okay. Now we're back when we're ready to syringe. Well, you want to make sure you maintain um, nitrogen on this so that it fit, um, especially once it's been pierced, so that you don't have um, air getting into your dry solvent. So before I get to syringing the solvent, I want to talk about syringes for a minute. Um, typically the kind of syringe we want to use in the lab are the lure lock kind, so those are the kind that have this threaded portion um, around the actual um, tip of the syringe. There are also metal ones like this glass syringe. So these two are meant to fit needles that have a kind of matching complementary portion on them so that they can be screwed into and that helps secure them on the syringe so that they don't come off. An alternative type of these just push on ones that are lacking that outer portion that gives it the screw on ability, so the looper lock portion. <clears throat> so when we're using a syringe it's important that we know where the tip of the needle is um, so we don't poke ourselves or anyone else. And also that we have a hand on the back of the plunger so that it doesn't fall out. That's a bit more important with these kind. As you can see, this will just drop free and those break. And these are expensive, so we don't want to do that. Um, we also don't want them to shoot out. So um, another thing is that when we're carrying a syringe, if we have to carry a syringe around the lab, we want to have one hand on the end of the needle and another hand um, on the plunger. So something along these lines to hold the hold of syringe when moving it from flask to flask is the um, appropriate way to do that. If we're syringing um, compounds that are pyrophoric or air sensitive, or that we just don't want to leak, we can use some Teflon tape around the joint between the lure lock and the needle. This will just help it be more secure um, so that whatever compound we're using doesn't leak, doesn't get on us, doesn't get outside of where it's needed. Kind of straight on this one how to do that. So I'm going to wrap some of the tape onto the um, syringe portion as well as onto the, the little bit onto the needle itself. Just giving you something along those lines to use. So now that we've got our syringe ready we're ready to um, push, put some solvent into this flask here. So this flask is under nitrogen as well as our solvent flask, and this one has a good flow in it so that we don't have any air that can get into this flask here. Uh, one of the first things we need to do is um, kind of purge the inside of our syringe with our inert gas. So I'm going to put it through this septum here, and then when we enter, we should feel or start seeing the syringe plunger moving backwards in the syringe. That means we have enough gas. If you don't have enough gas, either turn up your nitrogen flow or plug your bubbler with your hand. Pull some gas into the syringe, hold the back of the syringe, remove the tip of the needle, and then push that gas out. And repeat that three times. All right, so I'm going to hold this here though. Um, this is the flask that we're going to have receiving our um, solvent. So I want to, that's already under nitrogen. So I'm actually going to close the key on that. And then insert this bubbler. 
So that will give an outlet for the pressure that's in that flask once we want to add our solvent. So now we'll push the needle of the syringe down into the solvent, pull out the desired amount. Oftentimes you'll get a bit of a bubble, so you might have to use your syringe kind of like a burette and measure upside down. That's totally fine. Uh, we'll go with something like 12 millimeters. Anyway, then you want to have your syringe upside down so that the gas is at the top. Pull the needle, the tip of it, out of the solution or the solvent in your flask here and pull a bit more gas. That will clear any of the solvent out of the needle and also put more inert gas in on top of your solvent to protect it from the air. Then keeping control of the back of the syringe and the tip, transfer the needle into your flask that's receiving the solvent and then go ahead and push that solvent into your receiving flask. And again you'll see the bubbles coming out here as we're pushing um, air, you know there's the solvent takes up space and has to displace some air in the flask. And then we can remove that. We can give this a quick purge with uh, inert gas. And then close the key again and remove our bubbler. It's important that we don't run um, inert gas purge over a flask with solvent in it as that can evaporate off your solvent and then your flask will run dry and you won't have the solvent in it like you want. Depending on what you've syringed, this will vary a little bit, but it's important that you clean needles quickly, the reusable kind, quickly after you've used them. Um, so you can just unscrew it from the lure lock, throw the syringe away. But if you don't clean your needles quickly, depending on what you had in them, it can clog the um, inside of the needle and make it even harder to clean later when you need to use it. Um, so yeah, just clean these quickly and put them back where you found them um, so that they can keep on being used. So now that we're done with this solvent, we can put the Teflon stopper back in. So we wanna make sure that we have a good flow of nitrogen going into this flask. Then we wanna take the stopper, peel the um, lip of the septa, septum up, and then we wanna quickly replace them. Screw it down, but don't screw it all the way down. And then make sure that you see that you're getting a good flow of the nitrogen out of your bubbler on this side. That will mean that this flask is under pressure, um, under a positive pressure of inert gas, so that when it's sealed, it will have that positive pressure inside it and won't draw air through any of the um, spaces that it might draw. And tighten on your stopper and you're good to go.